Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by TLR Coatings. We are here uh, on vacation, not in studio, in Vegas filming. We're out of the studio for this episode and one more for right now. And uh, while I'm on the road here, attending a couple races. So the first race we attended, obviously, was the one we just passed here, Anaheim 2, which we are wrapping up. Now, since I'm on location, obviously, I don't have anyone in the studio with me so we are going to be talking over the phone with Justin and Cole and we will get them on in just a minute but first let's take care of the business end of everything so first up uh, like I said sponsored by TLR coatings make sure to check them out for all your custom powder coating needs they do uh, nationwide shipping in the lower 48 and can totally hook you guys up with anything you need also if you want to check the show out on any social media we are on Instagram Facebook Twitter all of the above um, obviously we have the YouTube show, we have the podcast if you can't, if you can't watch but you want to listen. We have that on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you want to support the show, donate on Patreon. Uh, click the Amazon links in the description below. Buy a shirt on Teespring, which I'll link in the description below. Um, I think that was it. I don't know. I'm spitballing this. Usually I have a whole board made up with everything. Uh, but anyway, let's get uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I'll do the track report myself since I was there. So as far as the track report went, uh, it rained pretty much Monday through Thursday in Anaheim. I was there. I was in Anaheim Wednesday and Thursday when I landed. Wednesday it was misting all day. I got there about noon. Uh, Thursday rained on and off, some hard, some light, all day long. Uh, they knew it. If, for anyone who doesn't watch, there is one of the Dirtworks guys that does have a YouTube channel. I think it's Dirtworks Alex, I'm not really sure. I'll try to link it in the description below if I remember. Um, which is a really cool thing to watch and see how these tracks are built and everything. So they actually flew in, I know Dirtworks flew in Sunday, they built the track all in one day, got it covered. Um, so the track was actually pretty prime for first practice and uh, Q1, which we didn't obviously get into Q1 because we're just normal people. Um, but the track was pretty prime. It wasn't really that wet. Uh, the outside edges were a little wet where they dumped the water off the tarps, but that's to be expected at any race where you get rain all week leading up to it. Track itself, it didn't shape up the way I thought it would. So there were lots of different sections. Um, we sat primarily over um, by the section after the whoop section and uh, after the first corner. So we kind of thought that area would be one lined. It turned out to be one line, but I think there was an opportunity for it not to be one line that no one took. So basically you would go through the whoops and you would come out of that corner and either jump over the table and then roll through the elevated corner or you could go on to the table and then on to the elevated corner around the outside onto another table and then off and then into this hip jump. Um, and that line, like I said, it turned out to be pretty much one line. Everyone was going inside. Now, the few people I did see go outside, you could carry more momentum, seemed to work better. Um, but again, no one was really doing it. I do remember at one point, I think it was like the second or third main, Ferendas took the outside and just blew, or no, maybe AC took the outside and just blew by Hayes. Absolutely blew by him. Um, so I think the outside could have worked if more people would have taken it, but I think everyone was so cautious they didn't want to give anything up. Because the track, there really wasn't a lot of places to make time on the track. The track itself was pretty basic. Everyone was doing pretty much everything. Um, you had two decently long rhythm sections. <laughs> yeah, well, you had a bunch of um, uh, short little rhythm jumps here, there, everywhere. There was a sand corner, but again, the sand corner was really just an inside only type thing. Um, which was weird because the outside did seem to work and later in the night some guys were taking the outside but it was just really weird that no one really ventured off at all so um, outside of that like I said the track pretty pretty darn basic and everyone was pretty much doing everything so not really a lot of places to make time and overall in my opinion the race wasn't super duper exciting 
uh, without the crashes. I mean, obviously we had some crashes and we'll get into that as we get farther along into this stuff. Um, but for the most part, wasn't super duper interesting. So that pretty much wraps up the paperwork and the track, uh, track talk about this race. So let's jump into 250s. We'll get, uh, we'll get Cole and Justin on the line here and we'll get going. So 250 Talk, on the line, we have normal co-host, Justin, say what's up. What's up, guys? And then we have new co-host, Cole. Cole, did you bring that Liat money yet? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get you that money when you start pronouncing it, right? Dude, Ooh. you either get us that Liat money or you're going to be off the show by round five, bro. I'll get you that Liat money. Whatever. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Liat. <laughs> Liat, Liat, whatever, dude. Do you give me that neck brace money or not? Just enunciate it, bro. Liat. Liat. At. Yo, can Liat get me a helmet so I can go ride this week or what? Bro, yeah, yeah. that's one. You could have bought it. What size you wear? Uh, dude, I need, like, uh, what size was that one you had in your car that I put on? Medium. You like it? Yeah, bro. It's medium. Well, let, me get, let me get that, right. bro. Part time riding season comes around and it's yours. Oh, God. Oh, all right, all right, we're in. So uh, the show is now Brown also co-sponsored by Liat Braces and Gear. Go check them out. Oh, it's sponsored by it now. That's <laughs> get some, get some money. Dude, did yeah. I just I just got a free helmet? So yeah, we're sponsored by them. All right, we gotta get to two fifties anyway. Um, so two fifties, <laughs> Shane, <laughs> the shit on Shane show, and yet he goes three, two, one for the overall. Justin, thoughts on Shane's ride on Saturday? I mean, it, I think it was just a matter of time. You know, the first two rounds, I mean, I'm not the – I like Shane. He's not one of the guys that I consistently root for. But, like, I, you know, I love his story. And we talked about it kind of on last week's show. He was just kind of, like, mediocre for the first two rounds and stuff. But still good, still doing Shane McElrath things. And, you know, we talked about it in the group chat. But, you know, he had talked about kind of changing his program at peaking at a different time where the last couple of years, you know, he started to uh, come out guns blazing, you know, win the first – for the first round and the third round and then kind of like taper off but uh he looked good and i mean that third round third race he just i don't know he just sat back there and marked everybody and then once he got around him it was smooth sailing and stuff and i don't know i mean it's it's adding more parody and uh that, that's kind of really they're all has to say about shane i mean the, he's not flashy and stuff he just gets the job done yeah dude you run, reminds me a lot of them um, to be honest riding style and just kind of the way he approaches things Oh yeah, oh yeah. Is uh, it looks like this year he's putting it together a little more, maybe changing up his program. And, and so far, it's, you know, after his ride at this deal, uh, I think it might work for him. So it's, it's going to come down to the end. Is anybody surprised? Yeah, I completely agree. Is anybody surprised it took him till the third main at A two to get a win? Because I mean, this is a guy that what the last two three years he's won A one, and or A yeah. two also like. I mean, it, I, um, it's a little bit of a shocker to me that it took him this long to put like third round in to put something together and it was a shortened main that he did it in like yeah that's, that's the crazy thing about moto though we're, we're all thinking about his last season but if you look back a little bit he's, he's been third on the podium every single round that's pretty respectful i mean i honestly would have thought that glendale would have been the first round and since he didn't win a1 but obviously that was a mutter so we know that changes things just because shane you know like cole just alluded to he, he reminds a lot of people with done he's really smooth methodical you know, he doesn't use a lot of body language. You know, he lets the bike do the work. So I'd have figured Glendale, especially with the way that track broke down, that would have been his first win if A1 wasn't. But uh, I think, honestly, and, and it's going to sound really simple, I think the fact that he could just get that second rhythm section, or third rhythm section, I should say, before the uh, whoops before the finish, just being able to go on, off, 3-3 three, three consistently every time, that third main, where a lot of guys, you know, they could hit on, off first time and then kind of lay it in the pocket and they gee out a little bit harder. I think just the fact that he hit a clean every lap, I mean, you know, that's where he made the pass. I think that that just, it came down to that. It's something that simple. But I think that was the big difference between him and everybody else is, is he just had that rhythm section dialed in where everybody else was, you know, they hit a clean two laps in a row and then they'd struggle for the next two laps, hit a clean struggle. So was there, was there a know. quad, was there a quad in that rhythm section that people were doing? Um, uh, you could no. probably count, count it as a quad if you want. 
five uh, competition. Because it was a ta it was a yeah. table, but it was a table by two, right? Table then over the yeah. next two. Okay, yeah. I thought so. I was and sitting. Everybody looks at that differently. Yeah, I was on the other side of the stadium, yeah. so I couldn't see it all day. Like I sat on that side of the stadium for the LCQs was all, but like. Then in the main, I kind of was watching. I was like, man, I feel like they're quadding in there, but I can't really tell because I can't really see that. So, okay, all right. But it was kind of a quad. Got it. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. You know, people, that's another conversation for another day. Is it tabletop, two jumps, is it one, whatever. But just for the fact that I think that he was in that rhythm section clean every lap, or even, you know, Nichols, he struggled for a couple laps in a row just hitting it clean. I, I think that was just the biggest thing. And, you know, like I said, after he got out front, it was kind of smooth sailing for him and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I hope we can keep this parity rolling and stuff. You know, the points got shaken up, even though Nichols still kept the points lead. I, I mean, it's it's always good when we got more guys battling for wins and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, if that was uh, the thing that catapulted them, clean, I'm going to go. Uh, what's up with Cincerilla? What's up with your boy? Well, you know, I think we well, kind of my I, boy. <laughs> we kind of decided that Adam's just going to Adam at this point. <laughs> like AC is going to so AC. If Adam's going to Adam. So if Adam's going to Adam, then that means Adam's never going to win the title. <sighs> I mean, it okay, it was a rough day. It was a rough day for us, all right? Saturday was not our best day. But I'll tell you what, he whole shot of that first main and was, like, out front for the first lap, which got the first lap leader, by the way, in the fantasy. Was fist pumping when he crossed the finish line there. And I was like, fuck yeah, here we go, 1-1-1. One, one, one. And then, yeah... Then he slides out in that fucking booter, coming into that booter, and yeah, that was pretty much how our night went. I think he thought that corner kept going longer, longer than it did. <laughs> I was just like, I was watching, and I wasn't even watching him, and all of a sudden I hear everybody go, oh, and I just look there, and there's AC laying on the ground. I'm like, no! What are you doing? Yeah, this is a like, new AC! He was like in the pocket of the face, and he still had the lean angle going on. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, the traction was still there, but I'm like, bro, you should have shifted a little bit earlier. You were still leaning through the corner. Oh, and, uh, my God. Other than that, I have to say a pretty uh, uneventful 250 night. It was just kind of all, all the big dogs are right there in the front. Well, I, I mean, think Frenchie, though, I mean, I think Frenchie, you know, he, I think he proved that when he gets a start, like, we, we kind of all think the AC, like, on any given lap is the fastest dude, which I, I don't know if I can argue that he isn't. But I think that Frenchie showed that, like, when he gets a start, it's going to be damn hard to beat him. And, you know, yeah, he's wild. And honestly, I think if he could have just hit that, you know, go the single over the table in that elevated section, he kept hitting the G out and it kind of lifted him over the face instead of bouncing into the face. If he could have just hit that clean... Like, he'd have got around AC that third main, and if I am doing the math right, I think he would have got the overall at that point. Maybe, I might be wrong on that, but uh, it was close. They were tied for a while. He just needed to get around the one guy, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he just, could, he just couldn't hit that section clean. I think that was it. But, I mean, why well, he's <clears throat> third in the points now. I think he was fourth after the mishap in Glendale. You know, AC moved back to fourth from second, so... I don't know. It's real close. I mean, it's from Nichols to AC. It's like what eight points or seven points or something. So it's yeah, it's eight. But yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I, you know, I think with the way Nichols rode, he he's kind of we keep we always bring up Dungey, but you know, and it's a, and we'll talk about in the 450 class. But the Dungey way of doing things, and Nichols is kind of doing that. He's winning when he can, and he's just getting podiums when he you know when he's not there. And it's hard to bet against Nichols, even though after only three rounds, but. Damn, man, like, it, there's just a lot going on in this class right now. Yeah, he's, he's smooth, he looks good. I, I, like, I'm a sucker for the way he rides. I like Vogel anyway. They got that Oklahoma swag going on. Oh, yeah. yeah they have oh, spitting rhymes and hitting lines. <laughs> Did you just use the term <laughs> spitting rhymes and hitting lines? Hitting rhymes and hitting lines. If I could punch you through the, the if I could punch you through the computer, I would right now. Well, it's like Nichols, Bogle, Garrett, Murr, Brad Frey. It's like they're all homies. <sighs> okay, Dude. so back to the motocross stuff. Nichols looked great all night. Like Nichols, he Nichols just looked solid. That was all there was to it. It was solid. Yeah. There was nothing else to even say. It was solid. Now your boy Ferrandez yeah, well, there. He still, still, you know, got to where he needed to be. Put himself in the right position. Yeah, um, a little tip over. I take that all day if I'm in his position. So, yeah, yeah, oh, and that's yeah. what it was. Was a little tip. Hell, he crashed coming out of the whoops, didn't he? Uh, yeah, a little right hander after the whoops. Yeah, before that. which Kenny crashed yeah, there too. Um, so what are you gonna say about that? I mean, it was it was tricky. Yeah, that corner um, was slick. They dumped a lot of water off on that side, and so that corner was a little muddy. So 
Yeah, that part of the track didn't flow to me. I mean, I know that you already talked about it before we started talking the track and stuff, and I don't want, know what you said, but I just, I was worried that the whole track was going to be one line. There was a few different rhythms and stuff, but that whole section, after coming across the start, basically to the hip double before the triple, that whole section didn't flow to me. I mean, it, I just, I didn't like so, that track. So here's the thing with that section, though. So everyone was either going like, after the whoops, they were going over the table and then rolling that corner, or they were going on the table and then just kind of rolling off in the inside. But in like the second main, third, I think it was the third main, AC went outside. He went um, through the whoops, corner, on, onto the cor upper corner, outside, onto the table, off, and then that hip jump, and he blew by Hayes. Like, yeah. like he was standing still. Going. Yeah, it was, you could push through it harder and carry a ton more, because they built a nice little berm on the top of that corner, so it actually, I think it was faster, but no one would take it. I didn't understand it, and like, I even think, AC only took it that one time. Yeah, so I think a lot of the riders, were, if you looked at the guys taking the inside, they were apexing straight across the track to the inside of that hip double, mm -hmm. and if you're a guy following some on the outside you guys are your lines are going to intersect and that's just going to be chaos and i think some guys were realizing that and a little little too risky uh, and also, coming off that step on step off coming into the hip jump like that um i think that was kind of scaring some guys like that uh, that well, weren't aware of what's going on around them i also think the problem with that section though is and then you know travis i don't know if you could see this because i don't know if they showed it in the stadium but for everybody who was watching it at home and stuff they showed the lip pro data of AC in practice. So that was definitely the faster line if you were putting in a heater. But I think the problem was is that the only way that was going to work is if you were literally side by side with someone, if they were going single over table or you going on off, because if that person on the inside had just a little, like even a bike length, it just wasn't going to work because that inside apex so quickly, as long as you could get into the rut, you were already out of the exiting of the corner compared to who was coming on the outside. And down right to the inside to that. Uh, yeah. So it was just, it, it was one of those things that, yes, it was faster, but it wasn't going to be one of those things that was going to, and obviously we've seen it, you know, it wasn't going to work every time. So, yeah, I agree. It was faster, but uh, it just, and, and that's the thing. We've, we've seen them try to do that, and I think they did that at A2 last year. They did a section that was similar. Maybe it was a different track. I might be wrong, but it doesn't ever work out like they think it's going to. It just, I think it's it a different it variation. A long rhythm section rather than like a, a hip jump like that would be a little better. But. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know. There was somewhere they had one of those they had one of those elevated corners somewhere. I don't remember where it was last year and it did actually work. The inside and the outside came out to be yep. semi-equal and so it worked because there were two, di two totally different lines. So um okay so let's let's just cover here so we talked about frenchy Fernandez, and I, the kid has speed but like i was texting you guys all day long sketchy sketchy never hit the ground though never, never did ground, though. but sketchy I, I really, yeah um, but uh after watching a little bit he was hanging up on stuff and not rhythms consistently as Justin just talked about but uh yeah I mean it, he made it work somehow so yeah he that did that speed though before the finish was nuts yeah well, Dude, well he was hitting that outside he was the only one going all well he wasn't the only one but he was doing it consistently like he was just waiting the pegs and railing the outside of that berm before the whoops and dude his whoop speed that that was nuts now it didn't work out well because it set him up for the inside so he had to kind of drift to hit the right 90 to kind of square it off but it, it was dude he he was I would almost say he was probably the fastest dude, 250 and 450, going through that whoop section all night. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he will. Um, okay, so also uh, Mitchell Harrison made it through the night. <laughs> I mean, 12, 9, 11, but at least his bike didn't grenade, so I guess maybe that's okay. Yeah, that's, uh, you said champion's bike grenaded in practice, so maybe they just gave him the shooting bike. Yeah, one. Yeah, I think it was 184. So that that's champion, right? That was champion. Yeah, yep, his champion. yeah his bike grenaded in practice. They were pushing that off. So um, or did he, he did wad it up pretty hard too? Maybe. Yeah, that I don't know. I didn't see him wad it in practice. So who knows? Maybe. But all I know is they were pushing that bike off. They pushed the bike because he crashed. He went down to the LCQ too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, whatever it takes. So. 
Um, I guess uh, the, I guess the only other couple things. So uh, how about Cantrell? What was that? The second main? He like hole shots and leads the first. He lead the first three oh quarters of a lap or something. And I was like, is this kid fucking for real? He's not going to do anything. And all of a sudden, boom, he's in the front. Like. Well, you know, he's not going to be on the team next year, so, you know, it's it's good for him. Well, maybe we can put him on a team with fucking Harrison and on the Rockwell team or something, you know? Maybe maybe we can fill it with that. It's, a, it's, a, it's okay. Mitchell Falk, he's going to be making his debut on the East Coast of Minneapolis, and that's going to go worse, so, you know. Oh, that's going to go horrible. i tell you that already. Uh, yeah. That so, kid's going to rag down the whoop so many times. So, uh, so Chris... But I do want to touch on something. You guys, you know what's coming. Oh God! Are you about to do like a Trabadine slick oil? Oh Jesus! Whatever. Talking about the track, a little slick over on the side of the track. Oh God! Oh boy! Get out of the way so we can move on. Chris blows. Yeah. I mean, good ride. He's been six and eight for ninth. Kudos to him. Yeah. He's a guy I didn't expect to see up there in that area. Um, another another solid good ride for Chris Close. And Matt and I were watching the race. We did some math or whatever. He is 31 years old. <laughs> so I think when we I think when we talked about this, I think I said I thought he was 30. So yeah, he's uh he's officially the oldest dude in the 250F class. Well, how old is Marty? I think Martin's 30. I think he's like oh, God. Uh, he might be 31 when East Coast comes around. Okay. Oh, right. So he, yeah, Blos, Blos is the oldest dude in the 250 class. Okay. Well, slick Chris Blos this week, so. Jesus Christ. I hope that dude gets a ride for outdoors, because I think people forget. Like, he was actually good back in the day in those TLD days when they were still on Hondas. But I don't know if he rode outdoors at the time. But, uh. Animal. So, but, yeah, how about, uh. It was, real, it was real close for my pick on the, uh, oil slick. It was between him or Hayes. Hayes had another good rider on the third for a while, but uh, I got to get. Yeah, you running good. Yeah, Hayes Hayes um, went six seven nine for seventh overall, so that was good. Hey, so I guess we can say, you know, as much shit as we talked, Hayes and Blos are are for real in this in the Supercross thing because Hayes has had three good rides now. Blos has had three you know, sneaky good rides. Yeah, Pettis yeah, is really is impressive. Really yep, I actually had Pettis on my fantasy, hey. so he helped me no, out no, there no, for I... sure. So. Um, what the hell happened to Enzo Lopes? Dude, he crashed a couple uh, times. He, was a pick of mine. he got me into a couple points, but not as good Oh, he did? Points. Okay, because, like, I I guess they just, I didn't even see him the whole entire night. I wasn't paying attention to uh, he went, where people not, were. 15, 11, 14. Yeah. Ah, Jesus. For 14. How about, uh, so how about this, too, just to, as long as we're throwing out names here. How about this Martin Costello? Rides last year, can barely make a fucking main. I think he's been in almost every one this year, hasn't he? Well, last uh, year, he made quite a few last year. He was riding for the IB Corp team. And yeah, I know that. He was a lot of the funding behind that team. From what I've heard. Yeah, now he's on the, uh, the Suzuki team that Larry Brooks, I think, is the team manager, which is weird because, as far as I know, that's like an amateur team because they have um, Lance Kobush, Dylan Schwartz, and somebody else and it, like I said it's supposed to be it's kind of like basically picking off where Cole Gress was just without all the help from Suzuki but like as far as I know Martin like he's yeah, he's the pro rider and I do that air quotes he's like the pro rider on that team so like I don't know how good that bike really is but uh, yeah he's definitely struggling compared to where he was last year when he was on the Ivy Corp team yeah, well, I don't know, man. I feel like he didn't make as many mains. I'm going to have to go and look at this because I feel like he didn't make as many mains yeah, last year. I can do a little bit, but I feel like he was 15th on back. Uh, no, Cole's right. He, he, well. he, hmm. he made quite a few mains last year. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, so, Jerry, Ro anybody have Jerry on their fantasy team this week? I did. I did. I did. Jer Jerry's, Jerry's going to Jerry, bro. Hey, man. Jerry is great in qualifying practice. And if it's <laughs> Triple crown every time you will make the main no matter what. <laughs> yeah, but is is uh Jerry, you leave Jerry alone, damn it. <laughs> well, 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 a top ten qualifying into an 18, 17, 21st, 21 for nineteenth overall. Uh... Hey, nobody said Jerry could make it ten plus one every time. <laughs> I figured it'd be at least maybe just five round and last, and there'd be at least a couple guys that would be in it. So. 
Well, I mean, RJ Hampshire though. I mean, RJ Hampshire though. RJ Hampshire. RJ's just doing RJ yeah. shit, man. He's not real. I mean, where yeah, we? I'm not hitting the ground. I guess. Solid, no, he crashed a couple times. I don't know if it was practice or, or during the night show, but he did crash a couple. I saw him on the ground a couple times, man. I think it was in practice though, because like he did pretty good. Well, you have the results up. What did he get? Because I think he was like what fourth overall. Yeah, he's fourth he overall. He went five four five. Okay, so I mean, better than you know last year. Like last year, if he'd been on the West Coast doing this, he would have went like four, ten, fifteen. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely better, but I'm still, I don't know. I he's, mean, his whoops, his whoops, like, are still all over the place. That dude is just skipping like side to side the whole entire time. But you know. Yeah, well, in all fairness, too, he's finished fourth like every. Person. Oh, go ahead, Cole. Yeah, no, I'm just saying some guys can just ride all sideways like that. And, and pull it off and maybe he's just going to be one of those guys. Oh, RJ just holds her wide. Just wide open. How funny would it be if he won this title? Because in all seriousness, he's gone 4-4-4 four, four, four in the first three races. I mean... And he's currently dude, fifth I, in points. I think, and this is my opinion, now we're only three rounds in and we're going to Oakland and it doesn't look like it's going to be... It doesn't look like they're going to get all the rain like they did last year. I don't even know it's supposed to rain in Oakland at all this week. But do um, not like okay. What's that? You don't like RJ, so keep that in mind when you when you're wherever you're going with this. <laughs> oh, wherever I was going, I was yes. I I don't like RJ. RJ is not one. Of, I actually like RJ more than I uh, Travis likes RJ, but no, I'm not the biggest RJ fan. What I was getting at is, is that this weekend track's probably going to be gnarly, super soft. I think that this championship is basically going to come down to whoever is the most consistent, and right now, obviously, that is Nichols. But talking about like Travis just said, RJ going four four four. Maybe he just goes four four four, gets a couple seconds, and then doesn't get a win. But he pulls like the Tim Ferry championship and just you know most consistent dude. I don't know. I don't think he's gonna win compared to Macarash three 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 one one three threes. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't either. But I just my point is is that this championship, I don't think we have a clear cut picture of who is the like the guy. Even though it seems like we're shitting on Nichols, but. I think this is going to come down to is just who is going to be the most consistent on their off nights, which, once again, is so far Nichols. But, I mean, I don't know. If RJ's going 4 4 4, and maybe he can get a couple podiums and stuff, and Nichols decides to fall apart, and we can't trust AC, and McElrath and Frenchy are up and down. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he pulls a Tim Ferry championship. I really, really hate to bring this up, but uh, Nichols seems to get bit by that injury bug quite a bit. Oh, man. Come on, dude. Come on. I'm just that saying. Cool. I'm just saying. Wouldn't that fucking suck if he's, God forbid, but he fucking is leading going into the break and then he gets hurt, like, during the break testing outdoors? That would be horrible. I mean, he seems to get hurt. Not at the races, usually off track, man, looking at his track record. So, I don't uh, think... Cole is right. He, he gets hurt a lot. Yep. So... so. All right, that's enough 250 talk unless we got something terribly important to talk about. Anything terribly important? Uh, no. Oh, no. Um, oh, boy, hold on. You got another Trivodine, Slick, whatever. By the uh, way, Trivodine's out right now until they call me. So. Oh, uh, uh, all right. They, they were supposed to be in. They haven't called me back. I'm not trying to talk bad about them because hopefully they'll call me here or email me. Actually, I need to call them. I've only emailed them. But, yeah, I haven't heard from them. So, th so they're out right now. But they might be back later in the season. But right now we've got that Lee at money coming in here. So. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe some stat with money. We'll see. All right. So, all right. That, that's enough 250 talk then. Let's, uh, let's get into 450s. Okay, so 450s here. Uh, let's just start with the winner. Cooper Webb goes 1-1-3. One, one, Cole, give us your thoughts on Cooper Webb. Whew, I don't know where to start with this one. Start with the stanky uh, finger. I think you guys seen the you know, that follow the Instagram, see my little post. He, uh, he's, the only thing I can think of is MX vs. ATV unleashed talking to people <laughs> when I think of Cooper Webb. <laughs> uh, just that whole finish line deal, looking back with the gun smoke, is 
it's super cocky in my opinion, but I, I like it. I kind of like it that that's what they're doing for. Um, especially, you know, for those who know about the, uh, the whole rocks and web off track incident, just adds more fuel to the fire. Um, so he, he, he's got the mind game thing going down. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's going to work for him or not, but, um, as, as far as on the bike, on track, putting all that stuff aside, I was, I was very impressed with the way he was. Um, one thing that stands out to me in particular was... The, the corner before the whoops after the, the start after the sand there um, going into that and standing up around the whole thing uh, European style um, and then hopping through the whoops Marv style so I think he's kind of picking up on some European stuff with Marv down there at the Baker's factory and putting it into his program and, and finding a good mix um, and starting to work for him so I, I'd be interesting to see if he carries this into some other rounds but um, as far as riding wise I like what I saw um, as far as the other off-track antics, I, I'm not, I don't really know about. I do like them. But, um, it's not not something I do, that's for sure. I do think I do think the uh, the uh, gun smoking gun what the stinky finger. Uh, I think that was a little excessive for a guy who has just won his first race. Like, let's tone her down there, bag it. You won one. Good job. Let's win another one though before we really start throwing out some you know shotguns there. But I will, I will give it to him. He backed it up the second race, and he had the speed to back it up in the third one, and rode conservative and smart because he knew he had the overall. I'll give you okay, that. Okay, so I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you brought that. Hold on, I'm glad you brought that up though. And are we all on board? And I, and I'm not. And this is taking nothing away from Eli, but because I'm not saying he wouldn't have won anyway. But if if we're, are we on board the fact that we all agree that Coop definitely laid up because he knew he didn't have to be Eli or Marv? Like, are we all in agreement of that? Because I've been seeing some people are like, oh, you know, he, uh, you know, he, the old coupe where he just kind of faded a little bit, didn't have it for the third main, he kind of settled in and stuff, and, you know, because he didn't have the speed to run, because I don't believe that. Like I said, I'm not saying that he would have beat Eli no matter what, but we all know that he knew he didn't have to beat him, and it was very clear right away when Eli started to sprint that Coop just kind of said, you know what, screw it, I don't need to go after him, because I know that this has been a talk that people are like, well... I don't think he had it. People are saying, oh, he faded, and it was getting to him and stuff. So are we all in agreement that that's what was happening in that third main? Yes. yes. I am, for sure. Yep. Okay, so are we in agreement that that's probably the one bad thing about these triple crowns? Other than that, I love them. But the one bad thing is, is if we get in a situation where a guy knows he doesn't have to beat somebody, more than likely he's not going to push the pace. I would say that's the only bad thing about the triple crown so far. I, I try, yeah, yeah. I would say that, but it also gives some of the guys a shot to talk about. So. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I'm not disagreeing. I love the Triple Crown, so I wish we had more. I'm just saying that, start to think about that, and that's the only bad thing I can come up with these is that if we get in a situation where somebody like Cooper went 1-1, one, one, knows unless he just has a disastrous third main, he doesn't have to go beat guys, you know he's going to lay up and just, hey, I'm going to take the points. Yeah, but yeah. the... One, one other thing I want to point out about what's right where he starts. Yes, um, he, it looks like he's got those things pretty dialed in, and if he, you know, if he's starting up front, he's going to run up front. Obviously, he has the speed, and looks like he's putting together the start. So, um, it'll be really interesting coming into next weekend. The only thing, the only well, thing I, it, the only thing I have to say about the whole like laying up thing is like, so in the stadium, they were putting on the jumbotrons like live scoring, and it was in, it was big on the jumbotron. Like you could see it of like who was where and like what their points were. So, yep. and we know these guys look around at stuff like the like the pylon and stuff in the middle. So if they put that on the jumbotron and there's an area in the track where they can see it, which in Anaheim Stadium there is because the jumbotrons are all on the outside, these guys, I, I think, will look at that and try, like the ones that aren't leading or whatever, will try to move forward to get where they need to be, especially if they see like they're real close to the top five there, they can be like, oh crap, like I got to get two more spots or something. So I don't, I think it kind of works both ways. I, I see what you're saying. We're like, yeah, like we have, we saw it last year with Eli too, of like the third one, he just laid up because he knew he didn't have to do it at a couple of them, you know, yep. to win it. So, yep. um, so I think it works both ways, but, uh, how about uh, how about Marv going three two two for second overall? Um, do we think maybe the shortness of the race is? I think he's back. You think he's back? I think that I think that that knee thing. We all know he was about the only one that we knew what was going on. 
Like, he had the knee surgery. He even said it. You know, it was talked about. He only had a few, like, not even a week, like a few days, really, of testing and actually doing motos. And I know that most people would say, well, that's really short for, a, you know, a knee rehab. But that, like, that first, and it was very apparent to me, at least. I don't know about you guys, but to me, that first main, like, when he was sitting back there marking Eli, and I was just kind of watching him get close, and then Eli would inch away in certain sections and stuff, obviously the whoops, because we know that's Marv's one downfall, unless they're rutted right down the middle. Like, I was just thinking, okay, Marv's going to sit back here, and if he can't make anything happen soon, like, Eli's just going to pull away from him, and Marv's going to have to get settle for fourth. And then Marv started inching up, and then he kept that get, he kept the pace with him, and then when he went around him in the whoops of all fucking places setting up for that right-hander and then gapped him, and I know it was only for third, to me, I know it's 12 plus 1, and that's what you were just saying. I'm thinking, okay, that looked, looked like Mar from yeah, last year. The past that was really good. But for yeah. those of us listening and that watch the show, I encourage you guys to follow Twitter because I'm always saying some funny stuff on there. Thank you. Thanks, plug. So I saw that coming. I um, imagine that pass. I you know, the thought comes into my head, or like KTM's, like, make the pass strong outside now, because uh, it really made me think of that pass the week before with Baggett. Oh, yeah. So no, I, I thought, that, I, thought I, that was really impressive, especially going around the side of the and, and, the, and like I said, he making the pass, like, leveling up halfway down the woods and then committing to the outside on a flat fucking corner, like, that really surprised me. I was thinking, like, if Marv would have made that pass in the far side rhythm section, I'd be like, okay, fine. But of all places, is one weakness like, to make that pass, or at least set up to make the pass in the right-hander there was what shocked me. And, yeah, I know it was 12 plus 1, but that was the first time to me I'm like, okay, this looked like 2018 Marv for the first time. And even in that third main, like, he didn't, he, he kind of dwindled away at it. Like, he didn't really break the lead, lead down, but it was going back and forth there for a while, and I don't know if they were showing it in the stadium for you for you guys, like me and you and tra- like Travis, but, like, it would go from, like, 5.2 to, like, 3.8 and then to 4.5 and then back and forth. And it never really got lower than, like, 3.9 or something, I think, or four seconds. But he was, like, inching away every other lap. And it's, like, I think that Marv just – he just needs to keep racing himself back into shape. And I think that this was the first weekend that he looked like 2018 Marv, in my opinion. I still got it. Yeah, I think he's back on the rise definitely for sure. And, like, I think, uh, like I said about Tomac, like, all these injuries for these guys – they were small little nagging injuries. Um, yep. I think kind of blessings in disguise for them because most of these guys try to come out swinging and peak right away, but now these guys are all going to peak mid-season, and it's going to be really, really interesting. I think. Oh, yeah. I I still yeah. want to see. I still want to see Marv go twenty plus one. Cause I mean, yeah. I like the short main. I think okay, yeah, it was a short main. If he comes out next week and he's on the box again or, you know, racy and right up front again, then, okay, I go, yeah, he's racing himself back into shape and he's getting close. But if he doesn't, then, eh, I don't know, man. Then I'm still going to say the injury thing. There's one guy I want to see do 20 plus one right now, and that's Anderson, and it doesn't look like that's happening very well. Um, Well, we, We already talked about this in the group chat, but for the show here, Anderson looked like shit all day. Qualifying didn't look good. Didn't look good in any of the mains. I, th- I think he's still hurt. I really do. I think he, and I know that you said the same thing on, on Sunday, Travis, and you said you didn't give a crap what he did in Glendale, which obviously he got second, but he, we know he did fade. But, uh, yeah, no, like, I was I was kind of on the thought that, okay, he was, like, fifth in qualifying and practice at Glendale, and he did the same thing at A2, and, you know, he, he had, he was looking good in the first main, but, yeah, those, and I know it was only, like, fifth or sixth or whatever it was. But the second, third main, it was very obvious that, like, something was wrong, especially that third main. I mean, what? He almost got lapped in that third main, I think. Like, well, I know he had problems at the start, and he went off track. Yeah, I was going to say, but, he had an issue before the triple, and he was off, went off the side of the triple and stopped, and basically it was just, like, dead last on that first lap. So, he, he did have issues that third main, but, man, dude, a 17th still, like, eh... He, he's he's got issues. Like I, I think that that wrist is a, it's it's a real thing. I think that it's gonna. And the problem is with the wrist, and we all know what it did to Stu back in the day when he broke his navicular. A wrist is not something that just heals over a year. Like it's it's ne- it, it, or I mean it takes a year. It's it's a nagging thing constantly, especially in Supercross with all the G outs and you know stuff like that and the whoops. And so I, honestly, I don't know if we're gonna see. Anderson from last year and all this year. Like, I know that Glendale was second. Okay, that was great. But if that wrist is worse than we all thought, like, this might be 
a shutdown season in Supercross for him. Like it, it's just it's not going to get any better. It's just going to it's going to be the same the whole entire year, in my opinion. Yeah, I just wish he would come out. Excuse me, I'm yawning. I'm tired over here. But uh, yeah, if, it, if he keeps doing this and, and and back in that area like that, you you need to man up and admit there's something wrong instead of everybody just wondering what the hell's going on. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, but which, as far as some other guys, and I don't know if you want to move on on time or anything, but I was going to get into Barsha. Yeah, we can talk um, about Barsha. Seven, seven, three, twenty-two for tenth overall. I mean, um, I guess I didn't pay like that close of attention to him. Down. What happened the last May? Oh, he crashed last May and bruised his tailbone or whatever. Yeah, How did he crash? I saw it on TV a little bit, and oh, dude, he got ejected. <laughs> yeah, he went ejecto cedo cut. It looked a he, lot. He like bailed that. halfway through. He bailed halfway through, and the stupid camera angle—we couldn't see the landing, but we all knew what you know, uh, how it was going to look. He, on Instagram, and the first thing I said when I saw that thing is that looked a lot like Rockets Scratch. Oh, uh, dude, yeah. Uh, and him laying there like that, it looked like an arm was hurt or something. But uh, the angle I saw, he he landed on the downside right on his ass cheeks. Also, <laughs> and, I, and I'm up the uh, you know the triple crown. He goes seven three twenty two, still tenth overall, still fourth in points. Um, yep. doesn't pick up a hit. I wasn't really, uh, and I and we're not going to talk about this because this just is a whole different topic, but I just want to say something, and I don't know if anybody else thought the same way, and I, I would never talk bad about the Asterix Mobile crew and Doc Bodner, but I was a little concerned with the way they were kind of like dragging his ass. Like, he was upright, but the way that, like, they were kind of, and I know they had to get off the track, but, like, the way that they handled that whole thing, like, it seems like they were trying to get him to walk faster than he needed to, and not knowing, like, obviously they knew he could walk and stuff, but not knowing how bad his injury was, like, mm-hmm. I, that was a little concerning to me. And I'm, I'm not going to go in on a safety thing. That's it's just it's not something I don't want to talk about because it opens Pandora's box. But I didn't really like the way that they handled that coming off the track. Like, I think that they needed to be a little bit more attentive with that. So that concerned me a little bit. That's all I want well, to say. But that that was a little concerning. I'll say from in the stadium. So he was he was on the track for a while, and they were they were with him for a while before they tried to get him off. And the other problem they were running into is because. I mean, it was like a freight train, so there wasn't a lot of, like, breaks between dudes where they could actually, like, drag him off of the track or get him off the track because where he crashed. So that's why, like, when the, when they basically dragged him off, like, it was drag him off because there's a dude coming over the hip jump right now, so you have two and a half seconds to get across 25 feet of track. So, um, oh, yeah, I know. But, they, I know. but like I said, they were with him for quite – I don't know if they showed on TV. They were with him for quite a while there – with him in the middle of the track and he actually got up and was sitting on the tough block or whatever too so it wasn't like it, it i don't know i mean like you said that's always a touchy subject but to me it seemed okay ish because like he was moving yep. and stuff like that so yeah yeah um so how about tomac those first two mains just didn't look good <laughs> we'll, we'll call it that I'll say this, I want to see him do 20 plus 1. You talk about the Marv thing, and I know that he won the last main, but I started thinking about that after that was over with, and I'm thinking, okay, he looked great. He, he won. I know he won by five seconds. He did in Tomac fashion. He got up front. He sprinted away. Like, he pulled, like, two seconds in the first lap, I think it was. But I'm thinking, well, Anderson was riding really good at Glendale, and then we all saw what happened. So if we're all on thinking that Tomac is another guy that was dealing with ish- injuries, I'm not so sure if that was regular main if he wins that because with the way Marv was riding and stuff, now who knows, maybe Marv fades too, which would have opened the door for Coop. But I still want to see if Eli can do 20 plus one because if he is dealing with an injury like everybody else thinks he is, I don't think he wins that main if that's a normal main. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I really don't. Like if we're just talking, if we're talking about the Marv thing, and I don't disagree because like I, it's, I think it's a thing. But think about that, like. And it was great for what? <laughs> I think it was uh, two minutes to go in a lap when Bagga got him in Glendale, and then he just dropped off. And, and that was a normal mountain. His ride in Glendale, they, they got to sit there and regroup up a lot with a yeah. red flag. So. Yep. So, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it was an up. It, it's a good thing to look forward to with Eli, and he kind of talked about it on the podium and stuff. 
But, yeah, no, I agree, Travis. And I even said it when we were in the group chat and stuff. Like, dude, when is the last time you've seen Eli, and I know it was only 12 plus 1, start in third and then get passed and dropped in the main? Like, yeah. Mark just dropped it. Yeah. I mean, I will say, so you, you were comparing him to Anderson and stuff, but, like, the big difference between that is, like, Anderson's gone 14-2-9, and Eli's gone, uh, like, 3-4-3. Three, three. So... <sighs> no, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm, I, I didn't mean it to make it sound like that. I'm not comparing, like, the results. I'm just comparing it that if we think Eli does have an injury, which I think we're kind of all on board with, yep. instead of this bull crap that Cowie's feeding us, I'm not so sure that if that was an injury, if like if he's still dealing with a back injury or whatever it is, that he would have had enough in the tank to go 20 plus one. Now maybe he knew that he was going to drop off a little bit, even at 12 plus one, so he sprinted as hard as he did. But I still have to see if he can do 20 plus one because I'm here to tell you, even though he's gone three, four the first two rounds and then doing that, if he goes to Oakland this weekend and he gets another fourth because it's 20 plus one, it's a normal race nothing has changed for me then like I still think that just like with Marvin Anderson he's reeling from an injury because like he looked mediocre the first two mains which is hard to believe because he went uh 3-4 or 4-4 or whatever it was Mm -hmm. like I just think it was he got the start in the the final main and once again not saying that Coop would have beat him but Coop didn't have to push like Coop did not have to beat him in that third main so it's like how much stock do we put in that third main like do we put a lot I don't know you're you're the Tomac guy out of the three of us like what do you think? I mean, I don't put a lot because, like you said, he went 4-4 of the first two mains. And the last main, we know Webb didn't have to beat him to get the overall. So I don't put a ton of it in. I, I'm I'm on board with you of we need to see when he gets to, you know, like next week in Oakland, can he go 20 plus 1 if he gets a start type shit, you know? So I'm with you on that. What happens if he doesn't get a start? What happens <sighs> if he doesn't get a start? Like, it's been proved that if he doesn't get a start... Well, like that's another thing we didn't even talk about and you know I kind of want to hear what Cole has to say because like Cole you know Cole feels kind of the same way I do about Eli if he's only going to get wins this year by getting starts like that's a bad that's a bad sign for Eli you know what I mean yeah yeah and yeah he's known for I mean I guess his style is just pulled off into the field being big badass guy or however Matt would describe him yeah <laughs> doctor <laughs> um yeah and and I said this in the beginning, I, I don't think he can start in the back and work his way through. I don't think anybody can really do that this year if they're, if they're farther back than fifth. Yep. So. Okay. Well, yeah, if so, I think includes clean air, then I think it's over. Okay. He, yep, he can do it. Um, so what about Kenny? I mean, two five four. we all thought he had that first main one until he made that mistake on the last lap. And then, obviously, it came out yesterday, or was it today, that we found out that Blake Savage had an accident, so he's had pretty much a ton of shit on his mind here. So it really doesn't surprise us that Kenny didn't do and, and great from things. I read too, that Kenny was at the track while it happened, too. So yeah, oh, they, didn't, didn't Blake say in his post that they were, yeah, they were riding together or something? Like, they were, you know, he was doing motos with, well, motos. But, yeah, motos with him or something? Yep. Yeah, I don't know. So I looked at Roxon's Instagram. I don't know if it was the sand track that Roxon was riding at, but or wouldn't uh, surprise me. Or they were riding that Supercross and track in Arizona. Yep. The ski uh, whatever. Uh, I would go if I if I had to guess. I, I saw a little video of a guy on a Honda with no numbers on it in that video of the Supercross track. Yep. Um, thinking maybe something like that happened. Either way, unfortunate deal, terrible deal. Um, it's just kind of a testament. To me that a rocks of mental strength going through that kind of stuff but, you know and then he has to come in and and lead the whole race almost wins it and then deal with some more drama with Webb doing what he did and he holds it together and, and comes out with a solid night for what's going on in my opinion and like I said when we, when we actually you brought that to the group chat talking about it I'm not so sure last year, Kenny, with all that stuff going on, if this would have been last year and then what happened in the first main, you know, being so close yet again, going, well, talking to Oakland, Ando doing what he did to him last year, leading all the way down to the last lap or two laps or whatever it was, literally the last lap this time, Coop gets around him, and then going down in that second main. I'm not so sure last year, Kenny doesn't implode. So, yeah, to keep echoing what Cole just said about the testament to how strong he is, I think that... I think that we keep talking about Eli, you know, being conservative and, and taking the points what he can and, and, you know, some of these other guys and Marv's kind of always been that way, but, you know, Anderson, we talk about the stuff that he does, the way he won last year, like Kenny, 
I know it's only three rounds, and I know that I'm going to sound like a homer because, I mean, we're all Kenny guys and stuff, but, like, it just shows that Kenny is in a different mindset this year, and, yeah, it's going to piss him off behind the scenes. Like, he, he should have won that first main. He really should have. And had that yeah, second I first main. Um, he might have won that first main. Yeah, I can't get fucked, but um, Bogle was on the inside of the lapper. He didn't get to turn down and cut down yeah. as hard as what he would like to and get a drive into the whoops. I think it would have been a drag race. And been pretty, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. If Bolo wouldn't have been on the inside, I didn't even really think about that. But if Bolo, yeah, if he wouldn't have been on the inside, Kenny could have squared down, like, right at the ending of the corner and just – he could have even slept on, on Coop a little bit and maybe made him think about it not shut off completely. But, yeah, he – so, yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I, I know that Eli gained two points on him or whatever it was and stuff, and it's it's crazy because who in the hell would have thought that Eli and Kenny, the guys who were one, two in the points, wouldn't have wins by now, like, right. at all. And, and Coop's in third in the points. Like, this this year, and, and that brings me to the question and stuff, we have three winners through three rounds. Are we a possibility, unless Ando is struggling for the rest of the year, could we have eight guys win a fucking main this year? Yeah, wouldn't su- eight, eight to ten wouldn't surprise me at all. If we're assuming that Kenny and Eli and, and, and Ando and Marv all get wins this year, and I still think AP can get a win when we go to the rutted tracks, but that's a whole different conversation, we could have a total of eight dudes winning mains this year. Like, yeah. I don't think that's ever happened. Like, no, I actually, I know that's never happened. Yeah. One, one guy that you that you leave out on is going to win, uh, which brings me to my okay. guy that's coming. Uh, here, God, here, here we go. All right, just say it, get it over with. Just, just say it. The Leah low key ride. Oh, 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 Wait a minute. Did, did you just say Dean Wilson could get a win? I think it's the starting line on a track like Indy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think he can do it. He oh, him in Indy last year. Oh, Jesus. Matt, if Matt listens to this, he's going to go ape shit. You should have said that. He is going to go ape shit, but I think he's consistent enough to get it done when the field starts depleting. Oh, God. So, like, an, an over, like an over, so, okay, so Indy, so you're at, okay, Maine, because I was thinking maybe you were thinking a triple crown, kind of like what Brayton did last year. I mean, yeah, he did good at Indy last year, and he did do good. That's that's when he got second overall or second um, that night. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on Dino. Like, I think that's that's tough. I think I would have picked more your prediction that Cole Seeley could get a win because he did look a little bit better. I know that his results don't reflect that. I was going to bring up another well, key ride is Cole Seeley looking a little more like himself. Yeah, and I, and I know that people will look at the results, and I don't even know what they were, but they're like, well, that doesn't really, like, it doesn't reflect that. But he was looking good, what was it, uh, second main or whatever? Like, he got loose in the rhythm section or whatever, or third main or whatever it was. He was looking a little bit better and stuff. I think a few more rounds, maybe he'll be back to his old self and stuff. Maybe by the time we go East Coast. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think right now Hill's been a disappointment. I think that, uh, yeah, big, big disappointment. Um, Savashi's been up and down. We know that he got, con- you know, he got concussed in Glendale, so we're not even going to talk about that. Um, Is anybody really that surprised about Hill? What's that? Is anybody really that surprised about Hill, though? I am. I'm not. I, I was thinking a little better, but when the camera was on him last night or the other night, he really didn't look that good. That's no. what I mean. That's what I'm. Con- that's what. Like I would have figured, even on Hill's bad nights. He still would have had, like, a top three lap time, like, fast lap at the end of the night. And he just, I don't know. Man. You know what? Maybe it's just a West Coast thing because, like, dude, he looked great last year in the two rounds that we saw before he got hurt in Atlanta. Who knows? Maybe he goes to the East Coast where it's tacky, but it, it's still weird because, like, you would think as smooth as Hill is that he would just be able to adapt to any track. So, I don't really know. Um, are we a little impressed by Reed's third main? Like, I was that was a little surprising to me. What's that? I was just going to bring that up. Reed would be the only other guy on this list that I would I would bring up um, about yeah. about the other night. Um, may, I don't know, maybe if he had a little more fire in the tank from sitting out around, sitting out of Maine. Uh, yep. Speaking of that, JGR, a NASCAR <laughs> team not taking two bikes. Dude, it sounds like it was a clutch issue. Which in both like, points? What's that? They didn't even have to. No, they didn't tech two. They didn't tech two at all. Oh, looks like that. Looks like Kyle Busch got an extra car and Reed didn't get an extra bike. 
<laughs> yeah, no shit. I would have at least figured the 450 team would have tech two bikes. Like, the 250 team is what I said I didn't think they would do. But apparently nobody tech two bikes. And then to find out it was a clutch issue, it just, like, blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. But either way, you get a test going in that, man. Uh, he was, where was he running toward the front? In the, in the third one with the fifth? He was in, like, third. Yeah, he was. Yeah, because he was holding up Kenny there for a while. Um, he just pulled up and let Kenny by. I think he got tired. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree, so. Um, so he, needs to, sorry, he needs to get back on that HGH or something. Get through the end. No, dude, blood doping. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, God. Dude, he's all, he's all, just send it on down the road and call it a career. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. But uh, I just want to say one thing about Coop and stuff because, like, I mean, you guys kind of basically covered it, you know. But uh, I do agree. I, I think that it's an upside. I, I still think that that KTM is, was going to suit him a lot better than Yamaha just because Coop is a smaller guy. But I will say, and, I, and it was another thing I brought up when we were talking about it on Saturday night, we saw Barsha and Baggett win their rounds, and then we saw what happened the week later. So, like, for anybody that's thinking, hey, might have to pump the brakes a little bit because Coop, but granted, Coop had two good rounds before this. So maybe he does keep it going. I don't know. I mean, I definitely wouldn't have thought he'd been third in the points to this, you know, point in the season. But uh, that's the first time I've seen 250 Coop show up, which if this is going to be continue to be a thing, like, more the merrier. We just we need need more guys that can come up and mix it up with a big four. Yeah. So his attitude for a little parity too. What's that? His attitude it brings a little more parity to it. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I think that stuff was cool when he was in the 250 class, but I. I I'm kind of up and down, kind of like where you are. Like, I think it's a week. like it, and that's why, that's why I think it's going to be interesting. Yep. Yeah, well, so far, that that, uh, that program's working for him. I didn't think it would, but he's proven me wrong so far. We'll, we'll see. We, it's only the first year. It's working. Let's see next year. Let's but, uh, see next year. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that uh, Oakland, though, Oakland's going to be interesting because I think the track's going to be close to like last year, and it's going to – a lot of guys are going to yeah, struggle. Break down. I think it's going to be a bar track. Well, I mean, we might as well get into the picks. What, uh, yeah. What, how do you guys want to do the fantasy picks? Well, do you what, want to just do uh, wins? What? Yeah, just give us the winner in each class because we're going kind of long here. So. Yeah, so. All right, go ahead, Cole. Oh, my bad. I, I just said I haven't looked at the track map, so – uh, uh, I haven't either. I'm just assuming that the track's going to be super soft. Yeah, I haven't looked at it either, so just go with it, whatever you think. All right, go ahead, Cole. Let's save the best for last. You guys go first. Oh, boy. Uh, waffle, right, waffle, so, waffle, uh, waffle, waffle. <laughs> 250s, uh, I think because this is not a triple crown, I think that uh, if it's soft, if it's soft, and we're assuming, I think Cole Nichols picks up his second win. I think that as smooth as he is and the way he's riding and stuff, I think that he... He trains on that tacky, deep shit when he's in Oklahoma and stuff, uh, even though it is red clay. Uh, I think that he gets a win, and as much as I hate to say it, I think I have to agree with Cole that uh, I think that it's going to be soft. I think Marv picks it up. I really do. That means the whoops are going to break down. He's not going to have to bang through them. He can rhythm through. It'll probably go like quad, quad, quad. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, Nichols and Marv win, or, uh, win the mains, but uh, I think Kenny uh, extends that point to He uh, probably sends it out another three. Because I think if it is soft, we don't matter, we know Tomac sucked ass on that track last year, so it ain't gonna be any different. Who won last year? Uh, Ando. Ando passed Kenny with two laps to go. Oh well, hell, we know that ain't that ain't, that ain't a thing. Well, no. If, if Ando would have been healthy, then I think it would be different. But uh, I think that yeah, it's gonna be a mark. Oh yeah, because Ando passed like, Kenny late last year, right? Yeah, like the last lap or two laps to go or some shit. Okay, great. So I got Kenny winning. And uh, we'll continue on the up and down. I think AC pulls it off, too. Wow. That's bold. That's bold for a soft track. That is super bold for that kind of track. Well, I'm just saying, AC, mm. AC, the new AC, has kind of a shitty week and then a good week. So he had a shitty week last yeah. week, and so now we're into a good week. Ooh. So. Ooh. Yeah, that's still bold to me. On a track like that, that's bold. But all right, good, good for you. But I think Kenny does it because I think Kenny's going to come out with a little fire here. So Kenny, I could see, yes, not AC though. Okay, all right, Cole, who you got, man? Uh, after thinking about it a little more, after you boys talking, I'm going Kenny. Um, for that reason, uh, last year. Wait, wait! I, you just switched up on me, you son of a bitch! <laughs> yep, 
I have to think about it a little more. Damn so, it. He knows he knows who the brains of this operation is. He's gonna, he's gonna think about his ride last year and, and use that as mental strength. Oh okay. uh, yeah. Knowing he gave one away, just I don't, I don't know. It's kind of like a hit view like I'm getting in the side the head of Rocky. But uh, I think. Yeah, he, he thinks about that ride last year. He left one on the table. He gets to start. Obviously, he wasn't as healthy last year as he is now. Mm-hmm. Strong on the bike. Still was able to manhandle his way through that track. Yep. Um, and another thing to add to that, the whole, you know, the whole situation this week with, with Blake Savage, I think he's he's got a little more fire, kind of like Travis said. He, he's got to, you know, he's going to get that win, you know, for Blake, you know, so. Yep. Um I think he, he's going to use that stuff for his advantage and, and mentally, mental strength and, and, and pull it off. And I called him the last three weeks, and he hasn't given me anything yet, but um, he does have the red plate. And he, he's, either way, if he doesn't win, he's going to be in the top three, but I, I look for him to win. Um, as, as far as 250s, um, I want to say Ferenas for my French people because of the way he, you know, the French guys – they're always so smooth and methodical, but he doesn't look like a smooth French guy. So, not anymore. I think he's going to be a little sketchy. Um, AC, I, I see him cross rutting or pushing the front wheel. Oh yeah. Um, I got to go. I got. I think I got to go Nichols, man. Um, All right. I think I got to go Nichols back in the up and. And yeah, I, I don't think anybody maybe challenges him. And I don't know. I think if he gets a start and does what he do day one. I think Mikel Rath will be the closest. Yeah, I see that kind of ride like he did at A1. Get the start on a rough kind of rush track. And he puts his, puts his laps in and goes and lets whatever happens behind him. Because we so know how do we think Coop does the start. So. so how do we think Coop does then? Because it doesn't sound like anybody has given Coop any chance to back it up. Coop, I, I wanted to... You know, I wanted to... I think it'll be close for Coop too. I wanted to bring him up just because of his ride at Oakland a couple years ago with Tomac there. Yep. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But I just don't. Um, I just don't think we have the data at this point with Coop to say, okay, he's going to be able to come in and back it up. We're going to have to go a couple of weeks here. Um, How many rounds for you then? How many rounds does it take for you? Let's we'll be in there a little more because just watching his riding style and his technique changing up a little bit, standing up a lot through the ruts. Um, example, Marv. Um, yeah. I think it, maybe his riding style is changing up a little bit. If he gets a start, I think he, he's right in there and, and might back it up. It, like I said, it all depends on the start. And after looking at Anaheim and you know, Webb was you know, top two off the start every time. So, well, if he backs it up, if he backs it up, if he can, if he can back it up for the next two rounds, so Oakland and San Diego going to the East Coast, which we know that he's he's a better guy when it comes to the tacky stuff. He proved that many times, not so much on the 450 the first two years, but on the 250s. Like outdoors wise, obviously because he rode West Coast and stuff. He is a guy coming from North Carolina who loves ruts. If he makes yeah. it up the next two weekends, then he's he doesn't have to win in my opinion. But if he's like second, third, you know, whatever, I think we're gonna have to really start reevaluating and thinking like, who are the big dogs for this year? Because that would mean that he would be at least second or, or still third in the points. Yeah, if, yeah. This season is a this season's pretty crazy. I think that all of us, everybody in the industry, is kind of waiting on a guy to, to back it up. Um, and which, yeah. which Coop would be that guy because we expected him to be. You know what I mean? Like not the last two years, but we all I mean, not, not to take any credit away from like Tomac Rocks and they've been yeah. backing up their solid rides, but they haven't been, you know, this out of this world crazy, you know, sweet ride that we've been seeing all these surprising rides. So, well, we um, could go to the we could go to the East Coast and Coop <laughs> Coop could have the fucking points lead. That's a weird thing to think about. Yeah, that would be crazy, but. uh yeah, but more power to him, I guess. Take the thing oh, to yeah. Vegas, four guys. Yep. Yeah, I'd be. All right. All right, well, we went long on this, even though we are trying to go short. So anything else to wrap this up, or should I just wrap it up? Well, you know, shit happens. <laughs> um, always, always, always wrap it up. Oh. Okay. Shut up, Cole. This is an after that. <laughs> anyway, all right, so this has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show, presented by TLR Coatings. Special sponsor, Liat, uh, as long as I get that helmet. However, if that helmet doesn't show up in the spring for me. You were emphasizing the at part so much. Well, you know, I don't want to say it wrong. We have a Liat fucking rep on right. the line with us here. You want me to say it? Yeah, go ahead. Liat. 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 Am I saying it right now? Liat? It says it every day in the mirror. 
I'll practice every day till next week. Um, so anyway, wrapping it up, and uh, thanks for watching. Follow us on all the social media. Links down below to support everything. We will see everybody uh, next week, same time, same place, same way from Oakland.